When you go to an ice cream parlor, do you just sample the tasters and walk out? Or if you're like me, you grab a big bowl, grab a couple of scoops and have a blast. Well, similar is the case with me and motorcycles and hopefully that is also the case with you. Because enjoying motorcycles is not about just a few hundred kilometers. It should be done in abundance. So we thought, how can we make our road test reviews more wholesome, more satiating and more insightful? So when we got our hands on the brand new Hero Charisma XMR210, we knew we had to do something different. Something that becomes a standard right here at Echo Drive. So welcome to our inaugural 500 km run of the new Charisma. Because this new Charisma also aims to be the starter to your sport riding journey. The concept is pretty simple. We ride 500 kilometers in a single day, splitting in nicely between a long highway stint, a healthy city run, and a dash to our local Christie's. And by the end of it, we are halfway into the first recommended service of the bike. Thus, by pushing it into an endurance zone, we aim to bring you just how a bike will behave in every possible scenario. So unlike the older Charisma, this new Charisma aims to provide the spark to the sporty rider inside you. It aims to be a zippy, sporty motorcycle without being an out-and-out -out crotch rocket. And in that regard, this motor simply fails to live up. Despite what the numbers suggest, it isn't quite as energetic. It feels pretty flat below 5000 RPM and only above 6500 RPM does it gain any sort of steam. And hence, you have to be in the right gear almost all the while if you are seeking thrill. There is a massive flat spot in the power band where you feel that the bike is moving, but your soul isn't. Hence, you have to red light every single gear to be somewhat entertained. Also, when you're out on the highway, the Charisma can sustain speeds of 100, 110 kmph quite easily. At 110 kmph, the motor does sound slightly strained and it's only when you start pushing further that it grumbles and it lets you know that, hey, relax, I only got 210 cc's. But in that regard, if you are stuck behind some traffic or you have to slow down below 85 kmph, you will have to shift two gears down to build up to rapid cruising speed once again. You will be accompanied by a tingling sensation at the 110 kmph cruising speeds. More at the pegs and the tank than anywhere else. But when you are caning the motor in the twisties, the vibes are more apparently noticed. But otherwise, it isn't much of a bother. You just wish Hero made it a bit more refined. It isn't that the motor is a pain to live with. You can pretty much ride around town at fourth gear in low speeds pretty much effortlessly. And only when you do get somewhat of a free stretch of road can you ride it at 60, 65 kmph in sixth gear. You might find yourself playing around with the gearbox a bit if you want to absolutely get a move on. And then you will notice the shifts aren't particularly slick, ending up being a bit dodgy, especially the down shifts. Now Arun has stated at the time of the first ride, the bike that he rode then had smoother shifts, so it might be a particular case of this unit. The clutch action though is pretty light. One area where the Charisma feels the nicest is the way it tackles the corners. It is sharp, but not unnervingly so. It is calm and poised, like you would want from a starter tool. It is also pretty forgiving, as there's not much drama involved in case you end up cooking up a corner or enter a corner too fast, with the foundation giving a fair bit of warning. In that regard, the brakes feel like a letdown. The performance is pretty adequate, you would say, but you simply don't have enough feel at the levers to let you know how much braking force to dive in. Hence, you end up braking a little earlier 
or else you'll end up triggering the ABS. And that part, let's talk about in a little while. Hopping onto the Charisma is no big task. It is pretty accessible for riders of all sizes. Even the space on offer is plenty decent for large riders like myself. And even after riding 350 kilometers on the highway, I wasn't feeling any soreness. The seat padding being quite on point. What I wish was better though, was the profile of the seat in itself. It doesn't provide much thigh support. And this rather flat shaped tank makes it quite tricky to lock your knees in. And hence, it is in quite a natural position. Adding to the lower body complications are the raised foot pegs. Now, if you are a large rider with large limbs or generously proportioned ones, you will find that this angle to be a bit more cramped than what you would have ideally liked. Hence, I would have liked if the foot pegs were pushed a little rearwards, making the whole posture a bit more natural. The hand controls are fairly raised, so you don't quite have much strain on your shoulders on long rides, with ample leverage offered to swiftly make your way through the tightest spots in traffic. Surprisingly, the Charisma does a fine job of flattening road imperfections. It isn't supple or mushy, but rather ply. You feel the rear end to be a bit on the firmer side, but nothing dramatically harsh or brutal to send shock waves through your spine. And if you're going to be riding with a pillion rider, well, they will find it a bit of a task to hop on to the tall pillion seat. Seating space on offer is also a little bit of a suspect as it isn't quite as wide, but the pillion isn't sitting quite as tall when compared to the rider. Something that you would find on other common sports bikes like the KTM RCs or the Yamaha R15. Now coming to the most important number that you guys would like to know about this bike, the fuel efficiency. And we got a couple of interesting numbers in our fuel runs. So after clocking in nearly 350 kilometers on the highway, the Charisma returned 28.27 kmpl, which when coupled with its rather small 11 liter fuel tank, means I could have done around 300 odd kilometers in a single go. But I didn't, and I'll explain why in the console part. Once in the city, riding naturally and not being overtly cautious or too heavy handed, the motor still delivered 28.93 kmpl which is respectable for a 200cc performance-oriented mill. Only when I started to ride it hard and fast did the economy go for a toss. But even then, 26.12 kmpl isn't too bad. So at the end of the 500km run, the Charisma delivered 27 kmpl, which is the least you can expect given the way I rode it with my heavy hand. So, in the real world, if you're riding a bit more conservatively, you can definitely expect more than 30 kilometers to the liter. Now, Hero does like to sprinkle a fair bit of new tech in its new products, and the Charisma is no different. But how many of these new features are actually useful and how many of them make a sizable impact. All LED lighting is appreciated, but the headlight intensity isn't too powerful. The throw is lacking and so is the spread. We also had a turn indicator fail on us. And then the negative LCD console is again not the easiest to read in harsh daylight. You can barely make out the speeds you're doing, which is the data that has the largest font size on the console. For the rest, you will have to arch forwards and block the sun to make out what you want to know for a brief moment. Plus, the range predictions and the indicated fuel level are a bit of a suspect. This was the only reason why I had to tank up 250 kilometers into the run. The range relies on real-time fuel efficiency data and not 
average trip fuel efficiency. Plus, I rode around for 50 kilometers after the fuel gauge went into reserve and I still found out that the tank had over two and a half liters on board when I tanked up. Hero has provided the Karizwa with a neat set of switches that feel nice to touch and operate. If only the turn indicator switch was a bit more tactile, it would have been more appreciated as I found myself pressing it harder than usual to cancel the turn indicator signal. Also, the integrated starter kill switch is a neat touch. Now, like I mentioned at the start, triggering the ABS on the Charisma is very easy if you go pretty hard at the levers. The only way to mitigate this problem is to brake early or do it gradually. But then, you're robbing the bike of its sport riding credentials. The Charisma gets an adjustable windshield which can be raised up to 30 mm. It is meant to be adjusted at standstill and shouldn't be done on the go, which makes it not as convenient to adjust as we found out on big ADV machines like the Ducati Multistrada. There is a slight difference in wind deflection between the two levels. Hopefully, the future iterations of this are better executed. Hero has priced the Charisma pretty well. When it was launched, it carried a sticker price of Rs 1.73 lakh and at the time of recording this video, the prices have gone up by 7,000 rupees. When compared to its sporty competition like the Yamaha R15 and the KTM RC200, it is still definitely a lot better value for money and it is priced lower than these two motorcycles. So you're getting a lot of bike for that money. But when you compare it to its original rival, the Bajaj Pulsar, which now appears in its 250cc Avatar, the Pulsar is definitely a lot more affordable than the Karizwa. Just like the Pulsar 220 was when compared to the OG Karizwa. So how was the Charisma after 500 kilometers? Well, as it turns out, it is quite a likeable motorcycle. One that tends to do a lot of things pretty well. And it is one of the nicer options in this segment. But it doesn't feel quite as special as the R15 or the RC200. Those two motorcycles might definitely be a lot more expensive, but they are a lot more rewarding and focused. The only reason why we think you would want to buy the Charisma is that you want a motorcycle that can perhaps do it all. One that is easy to live with in the city and can do a fair bit of sport touring. And given Hero's vast network of touch points and relatively low service and maintenance cost, the Charisma turns out to be quite a nice option for somebody who's looking at a bike in this segment. So how did you like our 500 km review video? Do you like this format? what else you would like us to improve going forwards. Do let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like and share this video. Subscribe to our channel, hit the bell notification icon and I will see you later.